major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton On Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Silent. And Arlene's here today. Uh, she, she's finally here today on the phone. Uh, on this uh, program, we, we will be doing the Ableton On Air 2020 Year in Review. Uh, this will air in, uh, at the end of the year. So in, in editing, um, just to let you guys know in our audience that this will air at the end of the year. Um, we would like to thank our sponsors, uh, Washington County Mental Health, and Green Mountain Support Services, and many, 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 many others, including Spotify and Anchor FM. Um, for those that want to listen to the Ableton On Air podcast, you can go to uh, www.anchor.fm um, or www.spotify.com. Um, anyway, let's get to the year in review. Um, Arlene, go ahead. Did you want to start? Yes, let's start with Alex Trebek, who recently passed away from cancer, but, you know, he did a good Jeopardy show, you know. But yeah, and they're still looking, actually. Um, uh, they didn't have a host. They're, Jennings is like a host. You know, yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to do, like, guest host first, and then... Yeah, but they were also looking into uh, LeVar Burton, who was on Star Trek and Reading Rainbow. Um, yeah, they don't know yet. They don't know yet. So huh? They're stalling for a few. They want to see how this host works out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you think about Sean Connery, oh, my God, the first James Bond, man. You could, you could miss him every day. You know? um, before we get to able to run air, you're in review let's take a look at what's been happening in the field of disabilities. Um, as you know, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 is still going on, and, and, and a lot of people, uh, beginning in May and June, a lot, a lot of people were having, a lot of people with special needs were having problems with services. I know that uh, being epileptic myself, it was hard for me to get some services, and uh, a lot of services went on Zoom or phone call with your doctor, you know, which is still not a good thing. If you're used to going to the doctor, you go to the doctor. But during the... You're you finally, you finally going to the dentist. During, yeah, but during the pandemic, it's been really hard. So let's, um, on Disability Scoop, www.disabilityscoop.com. Uh, you can go and look at um, situations in the, in the field of um, special needs media on disability school. Schools have struggled to fulfill individual education plans, IEPs amid the pandemic, government report fines. Basically, a lot of schools are having problems. Students are having problems with schoolwork, um, yeah, you can do schoolwork on computer, but uh, many um, students need one-on-one. Um, -on -one. A report on um, disabilityscoop.com, according uh, to, the, to November 30th, in November 30th, 2020, government investigators are offering up some first details about schools fared in addressing the needs of students with disabilities when shuttered at the start of the pandemic. A report out um, in the month of November from the Government Accountability Office 
dives into how schools manage special education and services for English learners during the switch to distant learning in the spring of 2019-2020 academic year. Finding out by large that they did struggle. Um, a lot of people have struggled. This um, won't stop until the pandemic stops. Um, the investigation was conducted as part of GAO's oversight <clears throat> responsibilities under the CARE Act and federal COVID relief package passed earlier this year. So a lot of people are still having school struggles. Um, Yeah, yeah. Many many students with special needs uh, need um, yeah they need one on one learning. Um, if you need one on one learning, uh, that's gonna, that's really hard. Um, in in terms of um, stuff. Uh, now, as far as able to learn is concerned, uh, let's take a look at. Um, Recently, there, were, there was a group uh, that Green Mountain Support Services introduced us to by the name of Elevate Us. Uh, Elevate Us is an agency that provides um, sex therapy and uh, classes on, on, um, on the topic of sex and sex and people with special needs. Let's take a look at that clip by Elevate Us. Let's take a look at this. We will focus on um, sex and people with special needs and with us to discuss this important topic. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Not at all. My name is Catherine McLaughlin mm -hmm. and I, am, uh, I have a small business called Elevatus Training and um, I live in New Hampshire. Okay. Can you explain the missions and goals of your uh, agency and how it works uh, with advocacy and um, and sex and people with special needs. Yeah, so uh, the mission is to empower, motivate, and educate self-advocates, professionals, and parents mm -hmm. to gain confidence, comfort, knowledge, and skills to teach and openly talk about sexuality. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that that will lead to people with developmental disabilities leading sexually healthy lives. Mm -hmm. That's the mission. The goals are really to provide um, education and training and educational materials to help people address this topic. So mm -hmm. rather than me running all around the country, I to teach this, I, my focus has been how do I help other people okay. so, become comfortable. So why why is it or why um, why is it so hard for especially parents of children with special needs? Why is it so hard for people to talk about sex as a topic because it is a touchy uh, subject for a lot of people? Yeah. Well, I think one. I think one thing is when we hear sexuality education, we think sex, um, but really it means a lot more than that. So it's also about relationships. How do you interact in different kinds of relationships? What's the difference between public and private? What's okay to do here and there? Um, as well as um, how do you move from friends to a partner or sweetheart? And, you know, it's a lot more than sex. Um, so I think that's one thing is that people hear sexuality and get scared that mm -hmm. you're going to teach my child to have sex. I think the other thing is um, that in general, our culture isn't comfortable with this topic whether you have a disability or not, right? So we just, you know, we, most people tell me at trainings that they get the message that they're not supposed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, wait till you're married, all kinds of things like that. So we have this negative messages in our culture about this topic in general. Then we lay on disability too. And um, so I think in, many people think of people with disabilities as um, asexual, so not needing any of this information, not wanting relationships, nothing. And so 
Um, I think those views, those myths and stereotypes about people with disabilities mm -hmm. make it hard for people to talk about it. So mm -hmm. one is we just don't talk about it in our culture, and the other are these myths and stereotypes. Another um, stereotype is that uh, people with disabilities are childlike, so they need protection from this. Um, so I think that's another reason that um, it's that how we're viewing people with disabilities. Uh, and another is sometimes people think of people with disabilities as oversex, like I can't give them this information or they'll go wild. And so there's all these ideas about people with disabilities that make people hold back in talking about it. Um, um, now, do you want to talk about the elections? Okay. Um, Some of the voting places weren't accessible, and they had to make it accessible again. They had to, you know, really work at it this year. You know, it was very hard because certain people couldn't go, you know, wheelchairs or they had wheelchairs or whatever. Mm -hmm. They had to make they had to make provisions, but this year they had to fix that. Okay. And recently, we, um, Able to On Air did an election special. So we did a two-part election special explaining to many people with special needs in our audience, explaining what the Electoral, electoral College is and how it benefits uh, people with special needs. Let's take a look at those two episodes. Let's take a look at the Ableton On Air election special. Let's take a look at this. Why don't we do this? And so it's going to be... Um, uh, in editing, so so that's the election as it stands now. Um, the election results as it stands now, and the map will be shown. So right now it is frozen with Joe Biden at two sixty four and Donald Trump at two fourteen. So the map um, will uh, then the map. Um, and we'll be putting, um, that this map is from the Associated Press. The Associated Press has not called the race, so they are not in charge of the race. They have not called it. Um, but, um, the, the map is on computer, is on your computer. You can go to it, and, um, it's from the Associated Press. And as it's been updated as from 11, um, 11.43 a.m. And this is, um, this is live as it happens. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, let's talk about uh, the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Um, well, Let's go to the definition of the Affordable Care Act, and then we can roll a piece of it um, here. Okay, so let's um, let's define the uh, Affordable Care Act here. Uh, as far as reform and affordable health care. Oops, hold on. Hold on, hold on a minute. Okay. Affordable Care Act. All right, so the Affordable Care Act um, is where people get affordable health care. Since the law was transformed by the... Uh, Transform the American healthcare system has expanded. Um, healthcare coverage to has expanded healthcare coverage to 20 million Americans, saving thousands of lives. The ACA codified protections for people with pre-existing conditions, cerebral palsy, blindness, etc., and eliminating patient costs, sharing uh, high value. Sharing the high value of preventive services. Let's take a look at 
the Abled and On Air episode with the Affordable Care Act. Let's take a look at this. The thing that's important to understand is that um, is that health care is extremely important, especially for people with special needs. So, um, the situation is what Vermont gets in terms of health care, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and certain services. Um, and a lot of countries have what we call free health care, um, or they pay a certain percentage uh, for health. But uh, yesterday, um, Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Kavanaugh um, suggested Tuesday that um, and Trump wants, the problem is Trump wants, um, President Trump wants affordable care or health care to go away or change. He says it's too expensive. Um, Arlene, what's your um, take on the importance of affordable health care? Uh, you know, speaking about um, people with special needs, there's one particular clip that we I would like to show. And, um, you know, William Jackson uh, is a good friend of ours of Able Done On Air. And uh, we recently interviewed him uh, back in July. And he's doing wonderful things despite his um, problems with mental health and situations with mental health. Let's... Let's take a look at um, the episode we did with William Jackson. Uh, uh, he's a freelancer, a freelance uh, journalist with the Harlem Times. Let's take a look and listen to that episode. Let's listen to William Jackson. Let's take a look at this. Can you give advice to anybody who is dealing with mental illness or mental challenges and wants to go into journalism? Well, um, the advice I would give them, you know, first and foremost, if they want to get into journalism, you know, make sure you know how to write. That's the that's the uh, that's the uh, the first thing that um, I would I would tell them, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I first started at Bronx and before I told anybody that I even had a disability, all right? Mm -hmm. um, the, first, the first question that was asked by one of the senior interns at the time was, you know, Williams, do you know how to write? And I said, yeah. I mean, I, I think at that time I had taken, like, you know, three different writing classes one, each intensifying in difficulty, and I passed each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so with um, high grades. So one thing I definitely know how to do is write, and I, that would be the that would be the um, the very first thing I would tell them um, to tell. Them. That would, would be the first piece of advice that I would give them. You know, definitely know how to write. And, um, you know, definitely don't let your um, being differently able to stop you from um, achieving your dreams, all right? If you want to be on air, you know, you definitely have to work hard at it, but don't, don't let um, things um, 
don't let the uh, difficulty of things um, scare you, basically. Mm-hmm. It's true, yeah. I so, agree. So don't what is... Like, if you want to take something, go, go for it. Don't let it, you know, hold you up. So, yeah. so William, what made you want to get two masters? You already have one. Well, um, well, um, you know, what made me get my uh, second masters is um, I've always, you know, I was flirting with the idea of getting a degree, you know, with getting another degree. Um, I just so happened to find a a um, degree program in creative nonfiction writing at uh, Bay Path University, which is, like we discussed, is a, it's mainly a women's college in um, Long Meadow, Massachusetts. But they do offer um, graduate, pro- or graduate programs for both men and women. Okay, so I want to make that clear. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Um, What made me want to get my second master's degree is, you know, I was doing some grant writing, okay? And I did it for two different organizations. The first one was called Career Resources, which helps people, you know, get jobs in Bridgeport, Connecticut, okay? And the second um, grant writing position was with the Beth L Center, which um, is a homeless shelter in Milford, Connecticut, Mm -hmm. all right? And both people agreed. Both people, the people I worked with at um, both Career Resources and Death Health Center agreed that I was a good writer. And, and, you know, everybody says that I'm a good writer, you know, basically. So basically, you know, we had at the end of the first grant writing, um, you know, the grant writing gig that, you know, they suggested that I, you know, go take some um go take some classes in creative writing. And, you know, that's what, um, you know, fueled the, um, you know, the decision to get a second degree. You know, um, I tried to find, actually, I tried to find some individual classes, you know, that dealt solely with grant writing, but I was having difficulty finding that. Mm. So I decided, you know, let's go get another degree. You know, in you know, in, like I said, the degree at Bay Path University is in uh, creative nonfiction writing. So you know, I'll be basically writing about basically writing, you know, nonfiction, which you know I've been doing anyway since um I was since I've been you know you know writing stuff journal writing journalistic articles. So you mm. know, I shouldn't be you know very difficult you know so you have that okay uh, let's take let's um, talk more about um, how people with special needs are dealing with the pandemic um, you must uh, wear your mask Governor Scott recently um, said in 2020 um, in 2020, about wearing masks. Um, let's take. Uh, hold on. Let me look that up. Okay. Um, according, there's a. Um, Something new here. According to a website, um, Disability Issues Brief, um, the ADA and mask wearing policies. So um, now there are plenty of reasons, and also Governor Scott um, mentioned some of these to people in Vermont. Individuals with asthma chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, or, or any other respiratory disabilities may not be able to wear a face mask because of difficulty of impaired breathing. P- 
people with respiratory disabilities should consult their own medical professional for advice using face masks. Also, the Center for Disease Control, CDC, or uh, also other states <clears throat> um, say that anyone who has trouble breathing should not wear a face mask. I know a lot of people will probably get angry at that, but they don't know what the person is going through. You got to know what the person is going through to understand this. So if you have any medical breathing problems, such as chronic pulmonary disease, which is called COPD or asthma, um, should not wear a face mask. People with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which, which includes severe anxiety or claustrophobia, which is an abnormal fear of being enclosed into narrow places, may feel afraid or terrified about wearing a face mask. These individuals may not have to not be able sorry, may not be able to stay calm or function when wearing a face mask. Um, I wanna, I'm going over this. Some people with autism are sensitive to touch and texture. Covering the nose and mouth with fabric. <clears throat> uh, covering, hold on. Um, covering the nose and mouth with fabric can cause sensory overload, feelings of panic, and extreme anxiety. A person who has cerebral palsy may have difficulty moving the small muscles in their hands, wrists, or fingers. Due to limited mobility, they may not be able to tie the strings or put the elastic loops of a face mask over the ears. This means that individuals <clears throat> may not be able to put on or remove the face mask without assistance. A person who uses mouth control devices such as sip and puff, or as they as they as they're known, and I know people who have one. Maybe one day we'll show what one looks like. Um, it's called a sippy cup, a, a cup with a large lid, and it has a straw, a big straw. Um, a, <clears throat> a person who uses mouth, yeah, sip and sip and puff or operates a wheelchair or assistive technology using their mouth or tongue to assist the ventilators sh will be unable to wear a mask. If the person with a disability is unable to wear a face mask, do I still have to allow them in my business or government agency? That's a big... Um, The number of states with mask mandates changes in response to the current outbreak of conditions. The District of Columbia, which is uh, Washington, D.C., or Puerto Rico, also have mask mandates in place. These mandates vary by state and generally call for face masks to be worn in public spaces, public transportation, or any situation where six feet of social separation cannot occur. These Mandates also include exemptions for children, people with disabilities, or, men or medical conditions, and situations where, <clears throat> where masks interfere with, with effective communication. Um, these, masks, these state mandates do not override the consideration for reasonable modifications required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Many private businesses also have developed policies requiring the use of face masks. The ADA does not have any rules that address the required face masks used by state and local governments or private owners. If a person is not, be, is not able to wear a face mask, state and local government agencies and private businesses must consider reasonable accommodations, which includes delivery. Um, hold on. 
one sec. Um, I'm getting it. Okay. Um, one minute. There, they must have reasonable modifications to a fast mask, face mask policy that a person with a disability can participate in or benefit from. The programs offered in goods and services that are provided. Um, if they can't go to the store, you can have it delivered. A reasonable modification means policies, practices, and procedures, if needed to provide goods and services, facility privileges, advantages, or accommodations to an individual with a disability. It is important to focus on how to provide goods and services to a customer with a disability in an equal manner. It, this can be done by reasonably modifying your policies, practices, and procedures. Now, examples of reasonable accommodations for businesses in every state or even Vermont. Allow the person to wear a scarf or lose face covering or face shield instead of a face mask. Allow customers to order online with curbside pickup or no contact delivery in a timely manner. Allow customers to order by phone with curbside pickup and no contact delivery in a timely manner. Um, allow a person to wait in a car for an appointment and enter the building when called or texted or offer appointments by telephone or video calls. Um, Yeah, there are three reasons under the, the ADA or state or local government or private business may not ha have to provide a reasonable accommodation. Okay. And they should, but a state or local government or agency or business may not have to provide reasonable accommodation if the modification would change the nature of a service uh, program or activity or service facility. The fundamental alteration is a change to a degree of the original program, service, or activity is no longer the same. Okay, so if it's going to alter the business completely, they might not be able to provide accommodation. Um, but they have to, okay? Yeah. It's a question of have to. Yes. Um, wait one minute. Okay. Um, no, it might be considered a direct threat. Um, well, hopefully police don't have to be called when trying to get a reasonable accommodation. The best practice tip, prepare a list of alternatives to face masks, cloth covering, policy that can share with people with disabilities who request reasonable modification to your policy. Um, so if you want information on this, you can go to ADA southeast.org that's ada southeast.org um anything else you want to say before we end we got a couple minutes left um not i can think of right now okay well um we would like to say well i would like to say i would like to thank our sponsors we mountain support services washington county mental health and uh many others this year for um, 2020, we would like to thank um, our um, sponsors for letting us come into your home. I know that uh, Ableton on Air has been a little different this year. Uh, we apologize for that. Um, 
2021 will be a better year. And, uh, you know, giving information to people with special needs and their families has been my business for 25 plus years being a journalist. And my wife is studying more to be a journalist. Uh, and it's, it's been, you know, everybody has their struggles. But giving information is what we do. And we would just like to thank the state of Vermont uh, and many others for supporting us uh, in many, many, many years of, of advocacy and journalism. Um, especially, I would like to thank Green Mountain Support Services for being there for us um, in past years as well as in 2021. Um, they, were, they are one of our major sponsors and we would like to thank them. We, uh, we will be heavily involved um, this coming year in 2021 with photography, with more videos, uh, with more portfolios for Ableton on air. And um, again, we would like to thank Orca Media for letting us uh, produce Ableton on air as we continue our mission. And that is uh, giving people news and information for and about people with special needs um, and for the differently able. Again, this puts an end to this edition of Ableton on air. Year in Review 2020. Uh, thank you to our sponsors. Uh, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you in 2021. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton On Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info Associated Press Media Editors U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International Anchor FM and Spotify